Hello everyone, it's Tracking Pat, and in today's video we're going to talk about the RMX control and more importantly about the different types of tool paths, especially adaptive machining. With adaptive machining, we have a lot of benefits that are going to come out of the way that you can actually cut the piece part. But before we get to that point, I want to go over a few other things that I think are very important. For years, we've been telling you from track machine tools that it's not that important how fast you can cut apart because in our business, we're usually only making one or two. That being said, the entire process being faster using a prototrack is what's most important. We can program and set up and get everything proven much quicker. So if it takes a little bit longer to make the part, that's okay. Now that being said, the truth of the matter is with an RMX, we have so many new benefits with the larger screen, the touch screen, with things like defaults and options and a tool library that we've actually sped up the beginning part of the process probably by about 25%. On top of that, we have three different tool paths available when you're cutting pockets and two different ways to cut profiles. And that allows you to speed up the actual cutting time too. So it's like a double bonus for you. What I'm about to do in this video is show you how to make a conventional rectangular pocket the old fashioned way with multiple cuts in the Z axis. Show you how long it's going to take and then cut that part. Then I'm going to turn around and I'm going to pull in the same pocket with adaptive machining, do it all in one cut, full depth, and show you how that's going to work, okay? And so before we talk about that, I want to talk about some of the other benefits that go along with adaptive machining. First of all, when you're using adaptive, you get to engage all or at least most of the cutter, which means the fact that because I'm taking one cut instead of multiple cuts, that alone speeds it up. It also allows you to get the most out of your tooling. Since you paid for the whole tool, you might as well use the whole tool. Next, it leaves you the ability to have a full chip load all the time. So no matter what your load is on that tool, it's going to stay fully engaged at all the time, which is going to give you a better finish and a better cut. It's easier on the tooling, it's easier on the machine, it will allow you to be able to have less horsepower required in order to be able to do much more cutting. And last but not least, it keeps the piece part itself much cooler, which is always better in the accuracy of the part when it's finished. Okay, so we're going to move that way now and I'm going to show to you the difference and let's get started. Okay, so here we are, we're going to cut the first rectangular pocket. And let me explain a little bit of how I have it set up so you know. This would be more of how we would normally do it in a Prototrack SX or something like that, or something else you might have. Okay, so I'm going to swipe forward to the page that shows the rectangular pocket here. Okay, and as you're going to see in here, I'm cutting in counterclockwise direction. I've got three passes in the rough cut using a half inch end mill with three flutes. I've got uh, pretty basic numbers in there. They're not conservative, but they're not super aggressive. More of what you'd probably have to do. I've got a finished cut in here with a second tool that's going to clean up the 200 thousandths radius that's in the four corners that I can't do with the half inch end mill. And then last but not least, I'm going to finish the outside of the part. Okay, so let's do that first and then let's take it to the next one after that. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do this same pocket using adaptive machining. Okay, so let me first of all, swipe forward and show you the event. So in here you'll see that I'm using surface footage and chip load now. I am going to do this entire rough cut with one cut. I'm going to helical into the bottom of the pocket and then cut out the entire thing using adaptive. I'm going to come back with the second tool to pick out the corners and then make the finish. So let me show you how that's going to work as well.
Okay, so there you have it, a direct comparison between conventional machining and using adaptive machining with the Prototrack RMX. As you can see, the differences are huge, but remember, it's not just about the toolpath, it's also all those other benefits that I explained earlier. And uh, if you like this and you wanna see more about it, either look us up on trackmt.com, check us out on our Instagram account, YouTube, and also Facebook. Thanks again for watching, I'm Tracking Pat. I'll see you in the next video.